So welcome to another session of Business Mathematics UGBS 202. Today we'll treat indices. And uh, I hope you've been following the other, other lessons. Okay. Now, indices born from the idea of index numbers. We, we, we just, indices basically, or an index number is a number that compares the value of, of, a, of a variable at any given point in time, right, with its value at a fixed point. And so it's more like a performance measure just to find out what has been happening to a certain variable. And with regards to that variable, it could be price, it could be quantity, it could be some number of stuff, right? To find out whether it's been on the increase or on the decrease over some time, right? So normally we find index numbers using some fixed period, which we normally refer to as the base period, and then some other period or the current period within which we are actually interested in doing the evaluation. Okay, so we'll go through some basic uh, arithmetics. In fact, this, this lesson would be very awesome because it has less mathematics. You know, when I mean less mathematics, I mean easy stuff to deal with. Okay, so let's look at the basic uh, simple index number construction. Normally, if we are looking for the index, think of the issue of stock exchange markets like the Ghana stock exchanges, the Nigerian stock exchange, Dow Jones and DAX and all that. They all use indices. They kind of tell us how the market is performing. Well, over time, we also hear stuff about consumer price indexes, producer price indexes, and all those stuff. All these things are, are just methods or just numbers that are describing a particular variable, either consumption, either it is price of goods, either it's the performance of a, of a commodity. And so we're also going to study how we compute these indices and make meaning of them and try to explain them and see how they come about. Okay, so well, basically, a simple index is just the, if it's a price index, then it is just the, the current price over the base price multiplied by 100. And, and so we'll, we'll look at some basic examples of, of this, and then we'll see how we, we use them. We'll explain the concept more and more as we move forward. Okay. So for the purposes of our study, we are going to limit ourselves to just price indices and then uh, quantity indices. So we'll just understand how we compute the index numbers for price and then quantities of, of, of commodities. Now, most index numbers in business relates to either the price or the quantity, and like what I was trying to say. So that's, that forms the basis for which we will limit ourselves to those kind of, or these two uh, types of indices. Okay, so for the notations, well, just like any other thing we've been doing, we just want to have certain values or variables that will be representative of what we're actually saying. So we don't have to be saying or using the full words. And so when we go on, or as we go on, P naught or P subscript zero would be the price at the base time of the point. So like we said, if we are finding the price index of a commodity, we need the base period and then the current period. The evaluation is always between the base period and then the current period. The base period is always that fixed period against which we'll compare whatever new period or current period we want to uh, do the analysis. And so our P naught is a price at the base period, P n, we refer to as the price at some other time. And so n referring to some period in the future or the nth period, which we actually don't know. So that current period or the period where we want to do the evaluation will be our pn. And so the same applies for the quantities. Q0 is for the quantity at the base time. And then Qn is for the quantity at some other period. And so ipn or iqn would be the price index and the quantity index respectively. So if you have IP, 
it's just like index or price or price index. If you have IQ, it is just the index or the quantity index, right? And so for any time, if you want to find the, the index of a certain product or the price of, of a product, like I said before, it is PN, which is the current price or the price at some future period divided by the price at the base period multiplied by 100. And also have this at the back of your mind that the price index or the index at the base period is always 100%. It's just like saying you're just dividing the same value by itself and multiply by 100. And so the index at at the, at the base period is always 100%. Now you, all, you, you need to have that at the back of your mind because certain times a data is given to you in the data set you are asked to find which periods or which period is the base period. That should be a clue to help you identify which period is the, the base period. So let's consider so a table as this. It says the price of a quantity of a product A from 2010 to 2014 is shown in the table below. So we want to kind of calculate the price index from 2010 to 2014. So let's assume that 2010 is our base period or the fixed period against which we are going to compare all the other periods. And so if 2010 is our base period, we said the index is the price, of course here we are finding the price index. So the price at the current period or the future time divided by the price at the base period multiplied by 100. If this is the base period, then the current price and then the base price will be the same. And so here in 2010, the price was 50, right? And so it is 50 by 50 times 100% and we have our index here to be 100. But look at the subsequent periods. For instance, in 2011, 2011 now becomes a period in the future or some period at some time which we wish to evaluate the price of this commodity. And so our PN will now be the price at 2011, but our PO will still remain the price at the base period, which is 50. If you multiply this expression by 100 and we have 120. And so we have 20 percentage point changes in price since 20. Uh, since 2010. And so it, it, it follows the same analogy throughout the other periods. You take 2014 and the price as at 2014 is 70. The base price at 2010 is still 50. So we have 70 over 50. You multiply by 100 and we have 140. And so here, the, the understanding here is there's a 40 percentage point change from in price from 2010 to 2014, or between 2010 and 2014. Very basic stuff. Okay. Now, so let's, we're going to look at various types of indices. And so as we go on and on and on, it's just going to be coming and coming and coming like that. Now, the, the only thing with this topic here is the, the let's say the, the issues are many. We have a lot of things to be looking at. But the computations are so, so, so easy. It's like uh, KG stuff. So you all follow with ease. Now, how about indices for more than one variable? Now, we're saying that maybe sometimes an entity or maybe a company may be involved in, in let's say, producing more than one company, one commodity. You could have, let's say, a shop that does not necessarily deal in one particular product. It deals with several products. You have let's say sugar, you have bread, you have, you have milo, you have a variety of things. And so we can also find the indices for these products one after the other, not necessarily clump them all together because it is under one umbrella company. If that would be the case, then it, it would be quite deceptive. And we'll see, we'll see such instances as we move forward. And so when we have issues where the we want be interested in the indices for more than one variable. We use two approaches, either the mean or the average relative index or the simple aggregate index. And in fact, they are very simple approaches. It says that the mean relative index at a period n would be the sum of the separate indices at period n divided by the number of indices. Now think about it. 
supposing that I have three products, say I have sugar, I have rice, and then I have wheat. All these will have various prices and will also have various quantities being demanded. And so I can find that there will be changes in their performance over some time period. What the mean or the average relative index or the mean relative index is saying is that you should take each product on their own, find their relative index, then you can now put it together to give a holistic idea of the entire product range by summing those individual indices and dividing by the number of indices you sum. It's just like finding the average of the indices. That's why it says the mean or the average relative index. And so I find the, in the, in the index number or the indices for, for sugar, I find the index for, 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 for rice, and I find it for wheat, and then I put it together and I divide by three because in this case, they are just uh, three products. The second one, which is the aggregate or relative index, talks about you summing the values in period M, and then you divide it by the sum of the values in the base periods for all of them, and then you multiply by 100. Don't forget to multiply by 100%. All indices are expressed in percentages, so 100%. Okay. So let's look at uh, a typical example as this. So let's go through the table and understand what the table is saying. So this is this portion here where I have the CASA are the years 2013, 2014, and 2015. Now, the items I have here are coffee, tea, hot chocolate, and this, the price in 2013, the price in 2014, and then the price in 2015. So I'm only interested in the price index. So we don't have data on the quantity index. So we'll just so here in 2013, coffee was 55 SOS, tea was 28, uh, hot chocolate was 72, and in 2014 these are the values for the prices. In 2015 these are the prices. Now, now let's try and find the indices. In this column on this portion of the table or the box here, I found the indices. So if I assume that if you're using 2013 as the base period, then if I want to find the price index for coffee in 2014, it is the price in the current period, which is 2014, divided by the price of coffee at the base period, which is 55. I multiply by 100, and I have 112.7. I'll do the same for coffee for 2015. I do the same for tea. I do the same for hot chocolate for both periods. Now let's see how we apply the, the intuition or the idea I spoke of earlier. Now to find the mean relative index or the relative mean index or the average, what this approach is saying is that, you see these indices that I have found. So let's say for 2014, the index for coffee was 112.7, it was 114.3 for tea, and it was 102.8 for, for hot chocolate. I sum these indices, and then I divide by the number of indices I summed. And so there were three, one, two, three, and so I find, I, so it's just like finding the average of the indices, very easy stuff. I do the same for 2015. And so I can find the mean relative index for all the three products in 2014 was 109.9. And then here, it is uh, 97.7. So now this is more like saying, well, if you want to explain it to the lean man, you would say probably if you put these three products together, in 2014, in total, it was more like 9.9% growth, putting the three together. But if you, if you were actually putting them, or uh, let's say handling them separately, you would say that in 2014, actually coffee, there was more like a 12.7% or kind of this thing. Okay. And so you do the same for the mean relative index for 2015. So this is for the three products. Now 97.7, this is a four. So that's more like saying there has been about, say, let's say 3 point something percent for 3.3% for in their performance in this year. Okay, so how about the simple aggregate relative index? 
Well, it still follows a similar idea of finding kind of, uh, let's say, an average, but it's not really. When we talk of the aggregate, aggregation means like putting, lumping everything together or summing up everything. So here the expression says that instead of summing the indices, the individual indices for each product and dividing by the number of indices, which is like in our case will be three, we would rather do the same, like take the formula PN over PO, but this time around, you do it for all of them, so I will lump everything. So in 2014, I take all the PNs for all the, 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 quant the, what's it called, the products. And so for coffee, 62 plus 32 for tea plus 74 for, uh, what's it called, for hot chocolate, right? And then I divide it by, again, the total or the sum of all the, the base values or the base prices. So 55 plus 28 plus 72. And so I put this together, then I multiply by 100% and I have this. And so I do the same thing for 2015 and so here. But you do see that, well, it, it's kind of following the same uh, result. Here, it's about 9.9 .9 increment. Here, it's about 8.39. Here, there was a 4. Here, there was also a 4. And so you can actually see, well, with regards to 2015, all the three products all combined, there was a 4 in their performance. And so it goes on and on and on like that. So this is the case of trying to find the index or the indices for some variables for more than uh, one variable. Okay, so here we say we use the relative mean index approach or the simple aggregate relative index. Okay, looking at these two approaches we've seen, there, there have been concerns raised about these approaches. Now, it, it may seem quite unfair, right? If you should just lump a number of, of products or yeah, and finding the indices together. It would be quite unfair. Now look at the example I have on this slide. Now it says that suppose the price of a loaf of bread was two CD, right? And then in year one, and then two CD 40 pesos in year two. And also the price of a ton of butter is let's say 2,800 in year one and 3,000. You do see that it's like the one, 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 one product in this expression seems to be virtually insignificant. Well, but you cannot just rule it out like that. In fact, if we actually found their indices separately, you, you, do, you, you can definitely see that, well, they all have some kind of essence. In fact, if you look at two, um, just a second, let me get my pointer. Okay, so for instance, if you see two CD, and a rise to 2.4. If you found the indices for this product, you will see you will find some significant change, some leap in, in, in the indices. But you see, because we are pairing it with one other commodity that has a huge value, and then the change between them doesn't really seem to be significant. It looks like butter kind of overshadows this thing, and it happens. Now look at it, for instance, if we have a number of firms trading on the stock exchange, you don't expect all of them performing at par. Some would be performing better than others. Some would have values or let's say returns on assets that would be way huge than the entire value of some of the firms. And so it would be quite inappropriate to just lump up this kind of uh, values or put the data together and just find one composite index to represent them. And so there's some concerns that we have with using these approaches. And so in trying to resolve this kind of, well, I don't want to call it a problem, it's just a minor challenge because, well, we still use this approach in finding the indices. Kind of, we, we have a basic or another type or another method in finding the indices, which we call the weighted indices. Now, in math, when we talk of weights, it's a basic idea of just adding emphasis to certain expressions or certain values, right? So for instance, let's take a funny example. If I had two sets of students who probably, let's say one is very studious and would do all assignments and would always come to lectures, and then the other one 
barely does any assignment, never comes to class, and is not interested in anything. Now, supposing these two students approached me at different times and wanted explanation for some concept we are treated in class, whom do you think I should probably pay more attention to or give more uh, as, uh, well, more of my time? Or whom do you think really deserves my time? I, in my opinion, I think would be the student who makes actually good effort to follow. And so the idea is, in that case, I am giving emphasis or I'm laying emphasis on the good performer and trying to give lesser emphasis to the guy who doesn't pay attention to anything. So it's the same idea we are doing here. Now, you see, if we have these two instances where we have two products, bread and butter, their prices vary, but if we found the indices, we'll see we'll find significant changes in their or significant differences in their indices. We can give them weights, and the weights will account for the variations, so that one doesn't seem submerged or hiding or let's say performing in the shadows of the other. And so we say that most of the times a commodity or an aspect of a commodity could be of more importance compared to another commodity. In this case, the manufacturer may want to place more emphasis or weights on the most important commodity. And that is just the, the scenario I was trying to put across. And so we are only going to take what we just did under the mean relative index and then the weighted aggregate index and then add a little, let's say a little weight or just tweak it a little bit to just give us a more meaningful, uh, what's it called, computation of the indices. Okay, so for the weighted indices, now, the only thing we are doing here is, if we go back to the mean relative index or the average relative index, what we've just added is this expression, weighted mean average, or weighted mean or average, uh, what's it called, relative index. Now, this is how we go about it. In the first instance, we said that compute the indices, sum them and divide by the number of indices, just like saying find the average of the indices. This time around, what we are saying is, if Having computed the indices, multiply each ind index by the respective weights that would be attached to that index, and then divide by the total or the sum of all the weights. Very easy, isn't it? And so this time, something is going to add emphasis or more like de-emphasize those that do not necessarily have they are, do not necessarily need the attention they have on, and those who really need the attention will get the attention that they, they actually deserve. And the other side of it, which is the weighted aggregate index, it's also saying that this time around, we are not just going to sum the base values, or let's say the prices, like the current price, and sum all the current prices, and then divide by the sum of all the base prices, and multiply by 100. Now, but before we do the submission, we'll multiply each price or each price by its respective weight. All right, okay, so from the expressions here, the WI is just referring to the weight or that emphasis we would like to attach to each product. The VNI is just the value of the commodity. Supposing it's price, then that would be the value of the price or if it's quantity. And so VNI is the value of commodity at, let's say the current period or some period other than the base period. And then the VOI would be the value at the base period. Let's take a practical example and you'll see how this works out. Okay, so this is a table here. I have the items, I have the years, and then I have in column three, I have the width. Okay, so please ignore this session. It's not supposed to be year, it's just, uh, so I have two years, year one and year two. Let's take year one to be our base period and year two to be the current period. These are the, the weights. Now, just a little something for you to see. Now, the value that has the highest, uh, oh, sorry, the product that has the highest value here means that has the highest weight and has the highest emphasis. Now, for instance, take product D. Product D has a weight of what, eight. So it means that, well, product D might be very important to us, and so we, will, we would give it a higher weight. Product one, product C has the least, and so well, probably it doesn't contribute much to our revenue, so we don't necessarily wish to add so much importance to it. And so it has the least weight, and it follows in that order, six and four. Okay, so let's see how the, the formula works out. 
So we will now look, we'll look at the weighted mean index and then we'll look at the second one, the weighted aggregate index. Okay, so first what we do here is we find the individual indices of the products. And so 24 is our PN and then 20 is our PO. When I mean PN, I mean price at some other period or price at the new period. And then PO is price at the base period. And so I do 24 over 20 times 100. It gives me the index for product A. I do same for product B, C, and D. And so these are their indices. In the first instance, what we did was just to sum these indices and divide, more like find the average of these. But before we do that, the weighted mean index is saying that take each of these indices, multiply them by the respective weights that were given here, the values we have here, multiply so if i take product a product a has a weight of six and now has an index of 120 so i do six by 120 and this is what i have here product b has a weight of four and its index i found was 92.73 so i do that i multiply four by that and so once i am done i sum all of these values it gives me a total and then what do i do i divide by the total of the weights now if i sum these weights the total, in total, the weights would give me a total value of 19. And so I take this 2,195.69, I divide by 19, and then I have 115.56%. And so here, you see, the, what makes this, this index more reliable or more, more, let's say, more preferable is that, you see, here it accounts for the differences and then the level of importance we attach to each product. We don't just assume that they are all equally important. In fact, the weights will tell you clearly that they are all not equally important. And so, and I think it is fair to use this approach because, well, if you have a shop, supposing you have a shop, you have, let's say, a, a typical provision shop, there are certain products that kind of move often on the market, like, the moment you restock, it finishes. The moment you restock, it finishes. There are others, well, it is relatively slow, but people kind of buy it. There are others, it could stay for months before you have one being purchased. I don't think you would want to place, you want to assume that that product is equally important to one that is being sold often and often. And so this approach kind of makes up for that uh, importance we want to attach to this product. And so the second approach, which is, again, the aggregate uh, the weighted aggregate index or price index here is, well, it says that, well, in the first instance, all we did was just to sum the values. So we sum all the, the, the current values, or let's say the PN values, and divide by the sum of all the PO values, and then you multiply by 100. But here, before we do the summation, we're saying that we multiply each of these values by the respective weights. Then we will divide the totals by each other multiply by 100. And so this column here, I do my WI by P and I. WI here is the weight for item I, when I goes from, let's say one to whatever number of products we have. So for product A, the current price at the current period or period two is 24. So six times 24, four times 51, one times 84, eight times 34. We do all these, and then we sum these values and we get this total value. And so for the denominator, which is the PO, we do the same, six times 20, four times 55 in that order. And we sum these total values, and then we have a grand total here. And so now we just put it back into the formula and we have this total, which is the PNI, or and then you divide by this one, which is the POI, then you multiply by 100. So this is the price at the current period, the sum total of the prices at the current period, over the sum total of the prices at the base period, multiplied by 100%. And we have 122.20. And the same understanding, or the same intuition makes up for, for this one. Okay. Okay, so let's look at one last uh, idea which we refer to as some special indices. Well, in fact, they are more like um, a build up on these ones. Now, someone would ask, how do we come by these weights? 
Well, I can assure you that mathematically, or well, typically, let's say in financial mathematics or in derivatives, we have a way of arriving at the weights. Well, some people could even use prior knowledge or data to even arrive at the weights, but there are, there are methods by which the experts use in coming out with the weights. But how about if we do not have weights? Well, we, there, are some, there are two special indices that we have, which we call the Las Paye index and then the Pache indices, right? The Las Paye indices and the Pache indices. Well, in fact, you can pronounce it how you see it. Some people call it Las Pires indices, well, but it's a proper noun, so well, the English guys will tell us. Okay, so, well, so for these special indices, the Las Paye index, also known as the base weight index, it says that this is a special case of weighted aggregate index which uses the base time period value as the weight. It is commonly associated with price and quantity. So here, instead of we identifying special weights for each of the products, all we say here is the base value, right? The base quantity values will make up for the, the weights. So if you are finding the price index, then the base quantity value becomes the weight for the price index. If you are finding the quantity index, then the base price value becomes the weights for the index. Okay, so let's go through these two, this uh, awesome approach and see. Okay, so this is how it is expressed. Now, if I have this is the expression. It says that it's going to be the sum of, you know the original formula is P and I over P O I, which is the current price over the current quantity. But because it's a weighted index, we take the quantity. So if it's a price index, then the base quantity becomes the weight. Now, if it's a quantity index like this one here, then the base price becomes what? The weight, very easy stuff. You don't really need to have to think so much. You just have to see it and you, you grasp it. Now, the second type of the special indices is the Pache index, which is the current weighted index. In fact, this is like the reverse of what I just said. Now, so this is the special case of a weighted aggregate index, which uses the current time period values as the weight for the index. So here, unlike the first instance where we used the the base quantity and then the base price. Here, we are going to use the current quantity and then the current price as the weights. Okay, so for a Pache index, for price Pache index, we have the original formula is our PNI over POI. Here, the weight is going to be our QNI and then what? QNI. So the, for a price index, the current quantity values will be the weight and then for a quantity index the current price values would be the weight so let's take a, an example and, and let's see work our way around it and see okay so here i only solve for the price indices take some time and try it out for the quantity indices you should get it okay so from my table these are the items or the products we have number of units here so year one and then year two, these are the units. So for product A, 20 units, 55, and then year two. And then these are the prices per unit. So for year one, product A, year product B, for, and then the same for year two for all the products. Now, let's say calculate the base weighted price index. Trust me, these questions don't come any different from us, we are seeing it. And so all you just have to do is just understand this one. Now, the name speaks for itself, it says, base weighted price index base weighted and so the base quantity and price should be the weights and so here so let's take year one to be the base period and year two would be the current period we're interested in so if i want to find the price index the price index says that it is my current price over the base price is 100. so let's start so for the current price for year two that's 11 isn't it now, what would be the weight? The, the, the special indices says it is a base weighted. And so the base value or the base quantity for this 
price would be its something and would be its weight. And so 11 will multiply 11 by what? 20. Because the 20 here is the base quantity for this current price. Okay. Now let's come here to the second one. We'll have the second period will be 25, which is the current price multiplied by its base what? Quantity. Then in product C, the price is 17, its base is 63. And then for the last one, which is product D, is 20 multiplied by 28. So we see it right here. We have all this stuff here. And then we'll do the denominator, which is going to multiply the base price multiplied by, again, the base quantity. So here, you see, the, the trick is, normally what we do is this divided by this, and that will give you the index. All we just do is this times this, plus this, times that, times this, times that, times this, times that. Then we divide it by, come to the base, which is the, the base price. This, again, times the base quantity. This times that, 19 times 28. And then you just do the computations, sum them, and multiply by 100%, and you're done, right? So that's it for the Pache, the Paye index, or the last Paye index. Now, the second one, which is the last, which is the Pache index, is like the reverse of this one, where in this case, the current quantities now become the weights. So we're just going to do the same thing. The only difference is this time around, we'll multiply this one by this, plus this, by this and it follows in that order and then the denominator will also be this times this this times that this times that very easy stuff like i said so well just take your time and do it for the quantity index just remember that this time around if you are calculating the quantity index now the prices will now be the weights okay so we'll call it uh, a day here for this session and i'll see you again for the next session thank you